Guys, welcome back to another video on the Planet Football YouTube channel. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in for this series so far where I've been reacting to a number of classic footballers in years gone by that I'm just too young to really remember. Last episode we checked out Zinedine Zidane, really enjoyed that video. And today we are going to be taking a look into JJ Akocha. Now out of all the people that I've reacted to so far, I'd probably say I know the least about Akocha really. There's really not a lot that I really know about him, obviously. I know that he played for Bolton and that's about it really. I know that he was obviously a very skillful player as well but in terms of like career highlights, what he achieved and that sort of stuff I really know very little about this one so it should be quite the interesting video. As always if you do go in to enjoy make sure to leave a like and get any of your other suggestions in the comments down below for any other players in years gone by, anyone sort of pre-2007 that you'd like to see me reacting to. So let's go ahead and check this one out, just how good was JJ Kotcher? Let's find Welcome out. Welcome to the career of a man larger than life, JJ Okosha. Very excited. He was born Augustine Azuka Okosha. In fact, it was his older brother who was first given the nickname JJ, as he was actually called James. Regardless, it stuck for young Augustine and led to perhaps the most repeated joke in the history of football. JJ Okosha. So good they named him twice. His okay, first yeah, encounter with football that happened as well. in that the streets like about. many other kids of yeah. other times. He said it himself in an interview with BBC. As far as I can remember, we used to play with anything, with any round thing we could find. And whenever we managed to get a hold of a ball, that was a bonus. I mean, it was amazing. Wow. Little is known about his time in Nigeria. At some point in time, he joined Enugu Rangers, apparently directly into the first team, and very quickly, he became a sort of celebrity there. But the moment that would define the rest of his career would come in a very unusual way. After his first season in 1990, he traveled to Germany so he could watch some Bundesliga matches and eventually visit one of his friends. But the thing is that one friend was Binebi Numa. Yeah, this stuff is all going to be like completely new to me really because obviously like I was saying before the only thing I really know about him was from his time at Bolton um, and I'm guessing that that came sort of later on in his career so all the stuff sort of like earlier on for Borussia, is all going to be Mink completely Kinsen. new to me so this is going to be in interesting. The German third division. As JJ watched one of their training sessions he dared to ask the most important question of his life. Can I join? And mm -hmm. thankfully they said yes. By the end of the training session, everyone was in awe of his skills. Yeah, Who is this guy? They asked. At first, the coach decided to merely ask him to come back the next day, but once beginner's luck was ruled out, he immediately offered him a contract. Over that first year, Akosha played 35 matches and scored 7 goals, and history repeated itself. One year was all it took to get him his next move, and once again it would be an odd one. Okosha would move to FC Zagbrücken in the second division, but before he even managed to play a match for them, another team would come knocking at his door. Eintracht Frankfurt. Okay, he made sure yeah. Zagbrücken would still profit from the move and took Okosha immediately. From Nigeria to the Bundesliga in little more than a year, JJ yeah, has no idea that he like, the properly started out in like, the Bundesliga. So. After, After a season of Nigeria. fighting for minutes at his new club, came his first major oh. iconic <laughs> moment. As Eintracht faced Karlsruhe, Okosha faced the mightiest. Oh, I can already tell I'm going to enjoy watching like the compilation of highlights um, in today's video a lot. All Outrageous time. rainbow flick As there. As Eintracht led 2 to 1, Okosha found the ball at his feet. As Khan angrily stared at him. It was like the wild, wild west. First move was Okosha's. He faded one way and went the other. Khan threw himself in front of the ball only to find himself laying on the ground far from it. <laughs> His duo of centre-backs desperately tried to stop Akosha but one fell wow. and somehow managed to be the one who looked the least like an idiot. <laughs> it was as if Akosha waited for Khan to get up before punishing him once again with a dagger of a shot that he would never be able to stop. So it I'm was guessing that was like the first the like, of the year. statement of and his sort years of career. Later, Khan really. would still recall it by telling the press that he was still dizzy from all the back and forth. <laughs> Akosha had proven he was a player like no other, standing out especially in a league like the Bundesliga, known yeah. for his strong, burly, rigid football, where only tactics could ever be enough to break through the mighty German walls, but there he was, making all of them crumble and bow down to his magical powers. Yeah, I mean, like I've already said, I've been loving the highlights um, that I've seen so far of it. I'm assuming that he was like, 
a bit of a sort of like trendsetter um, in that regard, really. So yeah, but really Russia interesting for that sort of like play style around this time German and things like that. Mario Gomes would tell the press that this goal was what defined his career. Back before it, he never watched football on TV. There he thought go. it was too boring to sit down right and you could just go out and play yourself. But one day, his father sat him down and told him to watch just this one goal. It was Alcosha and little Mario was in awe. From there on out, every Sunday, he sat and watched the highlights of the former match day with his father. Over the year of 1993, Alcosha would rise to relevance in the Nigerian national team after scoring a free kick in their World Cup qualification decisive match against Algeria. The following year would come the World Cup itself, but before it, there was still time for the African Cup of Nations, where despite only once playing a full match and not scoring a single goal, JJ Okosha would not only help Nigeria, but he would do it in such style that he managed to be one of the four Nigerians that made the team of the tournament after they beat Zambia to the title in the final. Coming off of this success, there was great nice. hope for Nigeria in the World Cup. Okosha would once again not be in the starting lineup for the first few matches, but he would come off two minutes before the end of their match against Argentina, which just happened to be Maradona's last ever official match for his national team. Wow! His first full match would come against Italy, where this time he would meet Roberto Baggio, who would be in the form of his life. As Nigeria led by one goal with two minutes to go, Baggio would score to take them to extra time, where he would score again to end their World Cup dreams. Still, okay. Okosha would make it into the stories of two of the greatest players of the 1990s. Okosha would watch as for the next two seasons Eintracht fell into mediocrity. By 1996 they had fallen down to 17th place in the Bundesliga. It was time to shake things up so as the Super Eagles went into the 1996 Olympic Games, JJ was ready. The group stage would be a breeze, qualifying for the next stage right from their second game. <laughs> the final match would still stand out though. You can tell he's as a player Nigeria who's got loads Brazil of personality as well, I love those kind of players. Um, yeah, sort of with the, the way he's on the pitch, and I'm assuming the way he's off Mexico, the pitch as well. Who had beat them in the Confederations Cup just the previous year, but that was only an extra motive to get back at them. From early on, an incredible goal by Okosha put them in front and eventually they'd make it to the semi-finals, where they would have to face Brazil again. The only team who had defeated them so far. If in the first match Brazil struggled, this time it wouldn't be the case. By halftime Brazil led 3-1, it was clear they had learned how to exploit Nigeria's weaknesses, but you know what? So had Nigeria, and so the match got turned around. Early in the second half, a penalty was awarded to Nigeria, Okosha stepped up and missed. It oh, seemed like wow. it just wasn't their lucky day. With little more than 10 minutes to go, the goal finally came. And then, in injury time, as Nigeria needed a lifeline, Okosha took the throw in, and after a huge mess in the box, the ball hit the net after a touch by Kanu. Nice. They were going into extra time. But first, one fun fact. Back then, extra time meant that the first team to score would win. So, just four minutes passed, and a long ball um. went through. Bounced off the forward's back, and Kanu was in position. One swift shot, an iconic celebration, and Nigeria were through to the Olympic final. What a match. The final would be an incredibly exciting match as well. Argentina would go in front twice, with Nigeria tying the match in both occasions, and once again going in front in injury time, even though Akosha had shockingly been subbed off. Regardless, wow. Nigeria had won gold at the Olympics and their incredible squad had made sure they would never be forgotten. As they came back from the Olympic Games, Okosha finally put an end to his time in Germany, as his relationship with Hub Heinkes had severely deteriorated. His next club would be Fenerbahce, where surely Turkish fans okay. would be in love with his flamboyant style. In his first league game, he Oof. would assist and score an incredible goal from outside the box. This kind of performance would perfectly encapsulate his time at Fenerbahce. Aww. It seemed that he was incapable of scoring a goal that wasn't absolutely stunning, and considering how often he was scoring them, it was impossible not <laughs> to be impressed. Yeah, Later in the sure. season, he would meet Manchester United at Old Trafford, and his magnificent performance would be a big part of how they managed to end United's incredible 40-year unbeaten run at home in the Champions League. Wow. Towards the end of the season, Okosha would score in four consecutive matches as he tried to get the title for his team, but still they would fail. 
Regardless, Okocha had managed an incredible 16 goals and 12 assists in the league, completely asserting himself as one of the best players in Turkey. His second oh. year would be equally incredible. Okocha would keep destroying every team he faced, still displaying a special liking for rivals Galatasaray. With I think he's another one where we've mentioned this sort of thing on previous videos that we've reacted to as well, but like the statistics, you know, isolated by themselves certainly don't do him justice. You know, you need to sort of be watching those sort of clips and, you know, learn this against, sort of backstory to really sort of appreciate him. For the two years he spent in Turkey. And I imagine, you know, being in the stadium when he was playing as well would have been some experience. Again, and it would be the end of this chapter as the exhibitions that came next would make him one of the most sought after players in Europe. Okay. At the 1998 World Cup, a lot was expected from Nigeria. But even as they went out in the round of 16, with Okosha failing to ever get on the score sheet, the tournament had served to showcase the talent of JJ, and the world was ecstatic over what they had seen. Even if the tournament might have seemed like a failure, it would set off the next chapter, as it would be the key piece to convincing PSG to fork out 13 million euros for the player, okay. making him the most expensive African player of all time. Wow. There was Opa I feel like I may have heard that he played for PSG before, but it wasn't sort of like at the front of my mind, so this will be interesting to see how he sort of got on there. Also, would be interesting to know as well, and you guys can sort of let me know in the comments down below, where is sort of JJ Kocha rated in sort of like the all-time list of like African players? Like, is he like right up there at the top, or are there still like some people above him and things like that? Because, uh, yeah, it's been a really interesting watch this one so far. Kosha would provide the team with the magic necessary to bring them back to glory, but honestly, at first it just wasn't enough, even in a squad that had players like Anelka, Pochettino and Mikel Arteta. His second oh, yeah. season would be the first glimmer of hope. PSG would prove to have taken substantial steps ahead, but unfortunately, oh. it became clear early on that they would trail behind Monaco in second place. The kicker would come in the Coupe de France, though. The thing PSG is, he's, like, he's a great, like, skillful player, and you think he'd just be that like, useful in around the box, but he can absolutely win. leather them Wet as well, the can't he? playing in second division and looking to be bound to stay there. It should have been the most straightforward win of all time, but the gods of football just seem to love an underdog, so of mm. course they won. Not by wow. one, but two nil, and the following season, despite still being in the second division, they would get to play in the UEFA Cup. As you might imagine, they got immediately knocked out. Over summer would come the African Cup of Nations, where despite going through suspension and missing the semi-final, it would be a big deal in the final, scoring as Nigeria came from being two goals down but it would not be enough, nice. as eventually the penalty shootout would see them going out of the tournament without silverware. The next season would bring Champions League football to Paris, but they would fail to make it out of the group stage and their domestic performances would suffer from it, causing mm. many to start doubting this squad had what it took to make it big. Thankfully, the arrival of a 22-year-old Ronaldinho would set it all ablaze. He was reckless, fiery, but also incredible to watch. My god, those two nature, in the same team, Kosha, I never knew they played together. because he could see a little bit of himself in the young boy, decided to take him under his wing, referring to him as his younger brother. Wow. At the beginning of the season, PSG would win the Intertoto Cup after facing Roberto Baggio's Brescia in the final, and they would go on to have a much better season than the... I mean, yeah, the, the thought of them two linking up on the pitch together, that would have been some experience. If you're like in the stadium and witnessing a great game between those two, I mean, that's Previous iconic ones. right there, well, isn't it? Also displaying some of the most visually appealing plays you could ever imagine. Yeah, By the end yeah, of it, sure. Okosha would claim to be very proud that he got to be a mentor to Ronaldinho, that he got to be an essential piece of the progress of turning Ronaldinho into a world-class player. That's crazy, but like, like thinking Ronaldinho of like Ronaldinho's play style, ever, you know, it totally makes they sense. They were so similar, they didn't even need to communicate. They could just know what the other was about to do. As football fans, we could have only wished to have wow. had a few more seasons of this amazing duo, but unfortunately, I mean, that goes that was after negative performances at both the 2002 World Cup and the African Cup of Nations, PSG decided that it was time to let go of Akosha was one of the club's highest earners and was mm. about to run out of his contract. After all, keep in mind he was about to become 29 years old. Older players okay, yeah, tend so to make outrageous time moves, but not many can beat this one. Seeing Okosha out of a contract, Sam Allardyce, coach of Bolton, who had just gotten promoted to the Premier League, decided to bid for Okosha. You know, just in case it sticks. So imagine his shock when they end up meeting. I still can't quite get my head around, like wrapped around this. Um, 
you know, Allardyce obviously pulled off an absolute worldie to get him in a Bolton, didn't he? And of course, he straight up tells him he wants to join, and in the most nonchalant way ever, he just ends up driving from Paris to Bolton the following day to sign the contract. <laughs> it's the just crazy, saga isn't it? Seemed more like a sitcom gag than a real transfer. Yeah, JJ yeah. and Sam couldn't be more different, but suddenly. Bolton, who were expected to get relegated straight back to the championship, now had in their possession one of the most high pro It's so strange as well, you know, obviously my perception of Sam Allardyce is like the recent sort of Sam Allardyce, and imagining like JJ Okocha in that team, my brain just can't quite like properly function with that information, but obviously it was great. Game. By the end of the year, Okocha led the goal scoring shards among the squad, despite a modest yeah, tally of just seven goals. Still, that had been enough to perform the miracle of keeping Bolton at the top flight and making them into one of the most entertaining squads in the league. Yeah, so much imagine. was their admiration towards Akosha that just in his second season he would be made captain, which clearly would pay off as a brace of free kicks in the League Cup semi-final would historically take Bolton to a final, though they would lose on minimal margin. He's and another player that, that just glides through people, doesn't he? Oh, oh he's got Akosha people sitting down. down. His team. Well, at the bare minimum, he had provided them with credibility. If two years earlier signing a top player seemed like the incredible. He's so fast. Now they were getting players Just like can Fernando wriggle out of those tight and spaces Ivan effortlessly. From Real Madrid and even Candela from Roma. Astonishing what a single transfer can do for a team. Yeah. In this multicultural squad, Okosha proved even more essential as a captain, since he was able to speak multiple languages and became more and more the glue that held the team together. Wow. And that led them to a shocking sixth place finish and a qualification to the UEFA Cup. Over summer, he took part in the African Cup of Nations, scoring an incredible four goals in just six matches, earning them a bronze medal and proving that he still had more than enough juice in him to power the Super <laughs> it's, it's just those little victory. like tricks and things in like that. In his final year at Bolton, Akosha would help the team make it out of the UEFA Cup group stage after facing the likes oh of Sevilla God, and Zenit. Pass. And they nearly made it through Marseille in the knockout stage had it not been for a known goal. After all of this, Okosha decided his work was done. He believed he had permanently changed the path of the club and it was time to go. After all, by now he was 32 years old. As many okay, assumed yeah. the move to the MLS was in the books, Okosha once again shocked the world by moving to Hull City, who were playing oh, the wow. championship at the time. When asked as to what was the reason behind his move, wow, I never knew that he played for Hull in the championship. God told him to do so. It's hard to determine if it was a successful move or not. It seems JJ had far more planned for it than what he actually managed to achieve. Injuries took over, and he only managed 19 mm. matches for the club over that season. Still, it oh, was okay. enough to help them achieve promotion for the first time in the club's 104 year long history. It took some time to decide whether or not it was time to go, but in the end, he decided that was it and retired. What a way to put an end to a career. Only someone yeah, like very Okosha interesting. could have pulled it off. Yeah, it's so interesting there to learn about, obviously, at club level in terms of like trophies and things like that. He didn't actually have like all too much success. And when you sort of read into those things, sort of like separate players from different eras and things like that, they can be a little bit misleading because, um, I mean, yeah, he obviously had all the talent in the world, didn't he? But there we have it, guys. There was my reaction to JJ Okocha. Very interesting video. Quite different to the other players that we've reacted to so far, I think it's fair to say. And, yeah, I did learn quite a bit um, throughout this one. Literally, like, the only thing I really knew going into this one was the fact that he played for Bolton. Had no idea that he played for Hull City in the Championship, so that one is completely news to me. I feel like this one's a bit of, like, a, a sort of what-if one as well, you know? Like, like, had he played for, like, one of the top clubs in England or, like, Spain or something like that, what would he have gone on to achieve at sort of like club level with like team trophies and things like that but in terms of an individual I mean yeah he was a special special player wasn't he judging by all of this so that will wrap it up for today's video guys as always if you did go on to enjoy make sure to leave a like and get any other suggestions for any other players that you'd like to see me react to in the comments down below apart from that though thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one